I'm with Michael Arthur, the British ambassador to Germany, and we're in the British Embassy in Berlin, a relatively new building opened in 2000. Michael, what impact has the architecture and commissioned works of art had for you on the diplomatic? Well, for me and my predecessors, it's had an absolutely huge impact. We built this building, designed by Michael Wilford, um, as a showcase for modern British architecture, the best of modern Britain uh, in every way. And it's absolutely had that uh, effect. Thousands, but literally thousands of people uh, come through this building every year and are much impressed by it. It's still the talk of the town in many ways. And part of that is the art that's in it. And we're really privileged and lucky to have things like the David Tremlett the mural behind us here. And then, of course, these Tony Cragg dancing uh, statues. They're fantastic pieces, which uh, you commissioned. Tony, I think, used local sandstone to give a link into Schinkel, who built so much of the 19th century uh, Berlin. So it's a great sort of link between Berlin, Brandenburg, modern Britain, and actually a, a sculptor, Tony, who lives and works in Wuppertal. So it's a really great bit of symbolism, as well as, as you see, some fantastic art. We're now looking at the Ernest Kapoor, turning the world inside out. This, of course, is not a commissioned work. We had it already in the collection. It's a fantastic piece, and it um, has a very prominent display here in the middle of our central area where we use, like the Tony Craggs. And apart from it, just a wonderful piece of sculpture, which I love looking at every time I go past, as do many other people. It's a particularly important uh, message for me to represent modern British society. Because here's Anish Kapoor, born in Bombay, Mumbai, now resident in London, internationally famous. And here we've got a great symbolism of that joint up um, life, if you like, here in the middle of Berlin. And it's, it catches everybody's eye, people love it. Uh, and often ask about its origin. So it's very useful to me in that context. We're in the residence of the British ambassador to Germany. Um, Michael Arthur has been the High Commissioner to India and also now in Berlin. And can you tell us about what it's meant for you to have work from the Government Art Collection in your residences? Well, as you know, Penny, I mean, residence is an integral part of how we do our job because our job is a people job. We're busy um, making contacts and friends for Britain abroad and doing that in a sort of semi-home is an important part of doing that. It's terribly important that people feel relaxed but in a British environment when they do that. And I think what the government art collection does for us around the world in residences is a huge asset for that. And for me, I mean, I've used that in both, as you say, India and now in Germany, in various different ways. And one of them is that you find a link between the two countries that is pictorial, I mean, it comes through the, the, the artwork, which is, uh, shows a bond between us which is similar to the human ones we make. And here's a very good example, if I can show you here in Berlin. Here is um, the Princess of Wales, as she became, but actually was a princess from uh, Germany back in the 18th century, painted by Adam Ramsey, fantastic picture. But it's a sort of symbolism of that um, regal link between us 300 years ago, which is uh, I can use in my everyday work. Of course, one of the things that all ambassadors are trying to do is also project an image of modern Britain and show the best about modern Britain. So I've, in both posts, been very uh, determined to have some good examples of contemporary British art as well. In particular, a house like this, which is kind of traditional, it's good to have some of that uh, to show. So we've got here two very striking John Virtues. He was the artist in residence at the galleries, you know, uh, painting some black and white skylines of London, and they are very striking, catch everybody's attention, people find it a great talking point, and I'm quite sort of proud to show that that's what we do. But you, Penny, very kindly suggested that we should also have something a bit different um, as well for modern, and here we have Elizabeth McGill, who, who is also a contemporary UK-based uh, painter. Uh, I think you chose this quite sensibly, because there's a sense of um, Caspar Friedrich about the colouring and the subject matter. And interestingly, lots of my German guests here, like this picture, sort of have a, have a striking chord with it. Yeah, maybe that's the Caspar Friedrich well, behind that, the That's good to know. Too. And here's another one I just want to show you, Penny, because this is a room which we, it's a small room, but through which a lot of people come, and it has the virtue of linking uh, the house period in Germany to the house period in Britain. And there are two links here. This house was originally the family home of the publishing company Ulstein, and the daughter of that house is Lady Annan uh, in the UK, because she migrated and married. 
And what we're showing in this uh, room, in particular, fine example here, is a Vanessa Bell, a uh, famous painting called uh, Byzantine Lady, uh, which is the same decade as the house was built, but sort of Brunsbury in Britain and Grunewald German here at the time. So that's what this is for.